Greetings, viewers, and welcome to this introductory video on Nightclub explaining its general mechanics. For those who don't already know, Nightclub is an indie platform fighter developed by Gutter Arcade, with the core objective of the game being similar to that of traditional fighters, to combat opponents on a variety of stages to reduce their health to zero. Where this game departs from traditional fighters, however, is that you are not forced to face your opponent at any given time. Along with this is the fact that there exist platforms, which can seriously impact how you combat your opponents. This is tied in with a larger amount of mobility than what you would expect from traditional fighters. This video's objective is to walk you, the viewer, through the game's general mechanics and some fundamental aspects of the gameplay to help you get more acquainted with this beautiful game. So grab your controller, choose your head, color, and weapon, and let's get started. Now the basic mechanics of the game are fairly self-explanatory. The first thing you must take note of is the health bar which is present above your character's head. This lines up perfectly with your health bar at the bottom of the screen so you always know how close you are to death. When your health reaches zero, you die. But you aren't necessarily out of the fight. That is, unless you run out of lives. That's right, like a normal platformer, you have lives, and once your lives hit zero, you are out for the count. Then, you become a little ghost that can fly around to annoy your friends. This only occurs if there are more than two people, however. It's not much, but it's something to do while you wait for your friends to finish fighting. You can also turn it off if you're not a fan of it. Now on the topic of fighting, whichever weapon you choose to wield, you have three attacks to utilize, forward, downwards, and upwards, alongside your aerial versions. When you hit your opponent with an attack, they will be stunned from the damage and unable to move for a moment. This is known as hit stun, which allows you, the attacker, to follow up with more attacks to perform a combo. It is also very important to keep track of your health. If you are alive and well within the fight, but close to dying, you can hold down to make your character crouch and heal. It's handy to use if your opponents are distracted or very far away. In normal versus mode, players recover 50 health out of a total of 1000. If you are off screen for too long during a match, you will die regardless of how much health you have. The time limit you have will be indicated by a circular bar around a skull that quickly decreases. Now for players in hit stun, you unfortunately have to wait until you are no longer in hit stun before you can act. But luckily, it doesn't last forever. The more times you get hit, the shorter your hit stun will last, and the further away you will be sent flying, which puts you into a tumble state. You will be unable to move until you recover from this tumble state, and once you recover, you will perform what is known as a tech roll. You can tech roll in up to five directions. Up, down, left, right, center. A tech roll makes you invincible for a moment as you roll in whatever direction you hold. However, you can choose to remain in a tumble state by just holding the jump button. This is effective for tricking your opponent. Whether you allow yourself to continue tumbling or immediately tech row in one of the five possible directions is all for you to decide, to keep them guessing. Now, while most people know what combos are, we should at least go into the specifics of how they work in Nightclub. In Nightclub, whenever you land an attack, it does a set number of damage. However, when performing a combo, every following attack will do less damage than the last due to a mechanic known as damage scaling. Damage scaling and knockback scaling are two mechanics that exist to prevent infinite combos by reducing the amount of damage that each falling attack does while also sending combo recipients flying further and further away the more times they get hit. Here are a couple of examples of combos using each of the four weapons. Although executing a combo isn't as simple as just knowing what the inputs are, you also have to utilize your other tools, which will increase the likelihood of you finding a scenario to execute a flashy and effective combo. These tools include running, dashing, shielding, and jumping. While each tool is exceptionally simple and straightforward, each one is essential for employing a variety of unique maneuvers. While running may seem like nothing special, it is important to note that even the slightest change in position can be the difference between a combo's execution and whether or not an attack hits you. Make use of the positional advantages you can gain from running to inch yourself out of the way of trouble. More powerful than running in terms of how much distance you can cover, and even in terms of executing combos, dashing allows you to quickly rush in the direction you are facing. Your character will cover a short amount of distance right before stopping in place. While dashing, you can cancel the dash by performing any of three options, attacking, jumping, or pressing down. By attacking, you can cover distance while remaining on the ground to close in on an opponent. By jumping, you can travel incredibly far, but at the cost of some height, as performing a jump out of a dash will always cover less vertical distance. After jumping, you can dash one more time while in the air. However, you will not be able to dash again in the air until you land on the ground, so be careful. And, by pressing down, you will perform what is known as a dash cancel, which will cancel the dashing animation and allow you to perform any action you want. This includes dashing again to repeat the process, attacking like normal, 
pulling out shield, which we will get into momentarily, or any other action you can think of. Because dashing naturally allows you to cover a large amount of distance in an exceptional amount of time, it may appear to be something you'd exclusively want to do, but be warned that nothing is more predictable than an opponent doing literally the exact same thing every single time, so try to mix it up with some walking and jumping. Using your shield is incredibly important regardless of whether you are playing offense or defense. While using the shield you will take zero damage from incoming attacks, but you cannot do anything else. You must be facing your opponent in order to block their attacks, however you will be unable to act while your shield is being hit, as you will go into what is known as block stun, a state in which you are unable to move due to receiving an incoming attack while shielding. Receiving attacks also causes your character to slide backwards, with the distance you travel varying greatly depending on the attack. To prevent yourself from being pressured into a corner from an onslaught of attacks, you can do one of two things with your shield. If you press forward in the direction you are shielding while receiving an attack, you can perform a push block. As the name suggests, it allows you to push an enemy back while blocking. Push blocking is effective for creating distance between you and your opponent, which can help you get out of a corner. However, the timing is a little bit strict. Be sure to quickly press forward after an attack lands on your shield, not before or during. The other option you can perform is known as a Just Defend, which occurs when you shield within 6 frames before an attack hits. A Just Defend has the added benefit of allowing you to release your shield without suffering any block stun and acting however you please while your opponent is at your mercy. Additionally, it will cause what is known as Hit Stop, which causes the screen to freeze for a moment to give you time to act, and also helps convey the impact of the attack on the shield. Because shields take zero damage, they might seem incredibly powerful, but they are not invincible. As stated before when shielding, you must be facing the direction of an incoming attack to block it. This means that an opponent can hit you if they attack from behind the shield. This can occur in two ways. The first way is with a cross-up, which occurs when hitting someone that is facing you while behind their shield. Cross-ups are an effective way to deal with someone who holds up their shield excessively. An effective way to perform a cross-up is to dash through an opponent and attack while they shield. Another method of defeating shields is to perform a backstab, which occurs when hitting someone's backside. This will be elaborated on further in its own section of the video. Last but not least in terms of the universal toolkit for all characters, we have jumping. You can adjust the height of your jump by releasing the jump button at different times. Tap the jump button for minimum height and hold it for maximum height. Not much else needs to be said about jumping except how it interacts with other options. As stated previously, you can dash while airborne. You can also attack while airborne. However, when dashing while airborne, there will be a noticeable delay before you can attack. Additionally, when landing on the ground while an attack is being thrown out, you will suffer a longer delay than normal before you can act again. The time in which you must wait before you can act again after attacking are known as recovery frames. Shielding while airborne allows you to retain your momentum as you move through the air. Your momentum, however, will be stopped by attacks, meaning that your movement can be intercepted while airborne. Finally, to end things off, we're going to go back to the attacking part of the combat by addressing two more unique mechanics, counter hit and backstab. While counter hit isn't really unique to nightclub, it is still a very useful mechanic. A counter hit occurs when you hit an opponent during the beginning of an attack before their hitbox comes out. When an opponent is in hit stun as a result of a counter hit, they will remain in hit stun for 10 extra frames longer than normal, allowing for follow-ups that would not be possible under normal circumstances. The attack dealt to them will also deal 10% more damage than normal. And then there's backstabbing. A backstab occurs when hitting an opponent while their back is facing away from you. Backstabbing is a very unique mechanic that can only exist in a game where your opponent can face away from you. More specifically, the hitbox of an attack has to hit behind them. Backstabbing is incredibly effective because it increases the amount of damage an attack does, with a damage increase varying between weapons. If a backstab is landed during a combo, the combo will have to end before another backstab can occur. Backstab as a mechanic makes it so the very act of facing away from your opponent is a threat. Use caution when running away from an opponent because you might just end up taking more damage from fleeing than if you would have just stayed and fought. And with that, this guide video is concluded. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in supporting the game's development, follow Gutter Arcade on Steam and Twitter to keep up with its updates. You can even join the Gutter Arcade Discord to be involved with discussions about the game. The links are in the description below. If you like this video, leaving a like would be appreciated. Subscribe for more nightclub-related content and updates and have a nice day.